All right, I remember, it's gotta be about 10 years ago, I received in the mail one of the most beautiful quilts, of course, which I still have to this day. Oh, it's so beautiful, I love things like that. And this one, you say it has schoolhouses on it, and you can tell it was made with such love and attention. Much like the quilts that are on display right now at the Connecticut Historical Society Museum in the West End of Hartford, it's a fairly new exhibit showcasing quilts made right here in Connecticut, dating back to the 1700s. Take a look. The colors are magnificent, the designs are so intricate, and the workmanship is out of this world. You're looking at some of the most beautiful quilts on display right now at the Connecticut Historical Society Museum and Library. Eileen Frank is the chief curator. The Connecticut Historical Society has close to 200 quilts and bed covers in our collection. And they're yours. They, they belong, belong to, you. to the museum. They date from the mid 1700s up into the 20th century. It's an amazing collection. I can't believe they withstood the test of time. I know. I know. We try to take good care of our things here. Absolutely. So we've been um, working with a really amazing woman, Lynn Bassett, who is um, a textile historian and expert. She knows our collection really well, and so she selected um, about 30 of her favorite exhibits that kind of tell the story of quilting from that mid-1700s up until today. But these are some of our really like star examples of quilts. And star, speaking of star. Speaking, yeah, so we have this beautiful star of Bethlehem quilt, which is from um, right around 1850, um, made by a woman, Sylvia Jacobs, in North Haven area. And what is a really lovely, I mean, it's a very complicated pattern to get the geometry um, correct when you are cutting out all of these diamonds and then placing them and stitching them together um, so that it lays nice and flat. Um, it's just a, a great opener to the exhibit. The next quilt is so unique. Eileen, this quilt looks like it's made of plastic. It does, but it's made of wool and um, it is a really deeply dyed a wool fabric that has been treated with chemicals that are then heated to give this um, glazing effect. So it has that nice glossy sheen to it. And so um, it was an old way of adding some, um, uh, some sparkle to the quilt. And this is a time when um, this quilt would have been uh, owned and made by someone of wealth. Wow, this is incredible, going back to the 1700s. Yeah, and made by a, a woman in the Suffield, Connecticut area. What makes a quilt a quilt? A quilt is um, three layers of fabric. You have your top layer, like this blue one, a backing layer, and then you stuff it with some sort of material that's going to keep you a little bit warm, that insulating material. Today it's usually polyester, but back then it might have been carded wool, it could be cotton. And then what you do is you sew through all three layers, that's how you get the design, and that's the quilting um, aspect of making a quilt. So interesting. So we're standing in front of a quilt, we're moving about 100 years um, closer to present day, so this is from around 1840s made by a woman named Ellen Hills Gilman of Hartford. And so this is getting into, I think when we say quilting, what we think, this piece work, right? So um, each little section is cut out. Here is a square, you have triangles. And then um, Ms. Gilman would have had to piece this all together and then build this up um, from one little tiny square into larger squares, larger squares. And this is because in the mid 1800s, Textiles actually become more available. We have growing textile industry here in New England that spreads out across the country. Um, the availability of fabric um, becomes something that's not reserved just for the really wealthy people. So quilting and doing this piecework was something that became more popular. There are quilts that were made during the Civil War, quilts that were made as fundraisers during World War I, quilts that celebrate fraternal organizations, and even some quilts made out of silk, made by a person who had wealth in the family. So many quilts to take a look at, but this one happens to be one of my favorites. It depicts a Yale-Harvard football game, and you can tell there's a little bit of a Yale bias here. And thank you, Eileen. This is, we just literally scratched the surface here. Uh, you have to come and see this exhibit. Please, it's gonna be here until May of 2020, so a nice long time. And if you like to look at it on your own, that's wonderful, but Saturdays at two o'clock, we do offer a guided tour. Perfect, thanks, Eileen, nice to see you. So great, thank you for coming. Saturdays at two, Saturdays at two. Beautiful work. The Connecticut Historical Society Museum is located in the west end of Hartford at 1 Elizabeth Street, and tell them Better Connecticut sent you.